Just the facts, ma'am. Hey, y'all. This video is going to be somewhat different than what I usually do. In fact, it actually will probably borderline on a little bit of fear porn. Uh, we're going to talk about the unspoken, very brutal, bloody reality of using a handgun in self-defense. It seems to me the vast majority of preppers, the vast majority of gun owners for that matter, they understand the rules involved, but they don't actually understand what they're trying to accomplish in those critical few seconds when your life is on the line and you have to stop an impending an, an attack. And when I say rules, I'm referring to things like aiming for center mass, shot placement, hollow point ammunition versus full metal jacket, caliber size, why 22 is not as effective as 40 caliber. When people understand what the actual goal is, the rules all make a whole lot more sense. Now please let me make one point clear. This is not addressing any legal issues that would be involved with a self-defense shooting. This is strictly talking about the mechanism that you would use in that situation to save your life. So, fantasy scenario. Let's say it's 3 o'clock in the morning. You hear glass breaking. You realize someone just broke into the house. You grab your firearm and before you know it, you suddenly see a shadow in the door and there's an assailant coming at you right now. At that point, it's do or die. You have got to stop that threat as quickly as possible. The goal at that moment is to fill that person with as many big bloody holes as you can as quickly as possible. Shoot as fast as you can until the threat stops. And by fast, you hit center mass, you hit it again and again and again rapidly. The reason you're doing that is because you're trying to cause massive internal bleeding. If you cause enough internal bleeding and enough internal damage, the blood pressure is going to suddenly drop, and when the blood pressure plummets instantaneously, the brain shuts off. At that point, once the brain shuts off, they hit the floor like a sack of potatoes. They're not moaning, they're not talking, they're not trying to shoot you back. The threat is over. It's said and done. As far as one-stop shots that are going to fix the situation for you because your aim is perfect, theoretically, that's just not realistic with the handgun. The only true one-shot drop would be with a handgun would be hitting the spine from the neck up or taking out the, the base or the middle of the brain. And that's a trick shot. That's why the police, the FBI, they do not even train for that shot with a handgun. They're aiming for center mass because that's where you're going to hit the organs, the lungs, the liver, the heart, the major blood vessels that are going up to the, to the head. That's where you're, you're going to do the most damage to be able to cause that blood loss. In fact, even if you did shoot someone in the heart two, three times, uh, people have been shot through the heart with buckshot, and they have continued to function and continued to run in some cases for 20 seconds or longer. That's a really long time if it's an assailant that's coming down on you, that could be shooting at you, that could be lunging at you with a knife. In reality, most people that drop after they're shot, if they're not unconscious, they're not dropping because they can't physically fight anymore. They're dropping because they're in pain and they don't want to fight anymore. At the same time, what if they're on drugs? What if they're on PCP or bath salts? They don't feel pain in that situation. They may not even realize they've been shot. So if they're hell-bent to kill you, they're going to keep coming at you and 20 seconds is a really long time. Keep in mind, this methodology isn't something that I made up. This comes from the FBI and the police departments who have researched this for many decades because they're the folks that are the most likely to have an assailant in close range coming down on them and they have to defend themselves with a the handgun. So, on that note, let's take a look at a couple of police shootings. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! While we're on the subject of police, if it is an SHTF situation where you cannot call emergency services and you just shot someone, it's another reason you don't want to be playing the game of trying to use your, your wonderful precision aim and, and take them down in one or two shots. Because the fact is, if they're on the floor now, they're moaning, they're in agony, they could be apologizing to you, saying, I'm sorry, man, my kids are starving, my kids are starving. Do you really want somebody that's now gunshot, could take dies, days to die, 
on your floor where you have to finish that off is nobody's going to come clean it up for you and even if you think that's not going to bother you you could have other family members there it could definitely be bothering them so it's just better for everyone concerned that things get handled quickly and efficiently the second critical factor to consider in a life or death situation is what the massive amount of adrenaline is going to do to your physical and mental abilities in that moment and why your aim is not going to be perfect your bullets are going to be going all over the place what you can expect to happen your system is going to be flooded with not only adrenaline but also cortisol and norepinephrine it's very common to experience auditory exclusion where sounds sound very faint or you may not be aware of the sounds around you at all tunnel vision is another common symptom your pupils dilate very very quickly to let more light into your eyes as a result your, your field of vision narrows dramatically and sharpens tachypsychia is another phenomenon that's where time seems to either slow down or speed up your reaction time is going to be a lot slower um, you're likely to experience vasoconstriction which means the blood pulls away from your extremities to the core of your body it also pulls away from the upper regions of your brain down to the lower regions vasoconstriction ends up causing a deterioration of your fine motor skills and more importantly it severely affects your brain function when you look at military studies and police studies where they analyze this they they say on average it decreases your mental function to about fifty per sixty percent of normal so let's look a little bit more about what it's going to do to your brain and your thought processes it's generally considered your brain has three sections the oldest section is the reptilian section the smallest at the base that handles everything dealing with instinct including breathing hunger thirst balance the midsection the midbrain handles primarily things of a social order maternal love fear hate anger anxiety that's midbrain it also controls memory which is very important in this situation the neocortex which is the blue area that's the area that basically stops functioning once you get hit by the adrenaline that is all of your higher thought processes analysis risk calculation problem solving creativity all the things that a lot of people imagine they're going to be doing really well in that crisis situation that stops your ability to come up with new ideas stop and that's why the military and the police they train their personnel so heavily so that when their brain stops working the neocortex shuts down they can refer to memory they've got the training they can you, they can pull up the simple plans they can act on a simple plan so if you understand that this is likely to happen to you you can do the same thing you can come up with very simple plans that do not require a lot of thought that don't require a lot of judgment on your part when you come up with four options and you have to weigh which one is the best one you don't want to be in that situation have simple plans in the case of a, if a home intruder came in a simple plan might be instead of doing what they do in the movies where the guy grabs his gun and he's going down walking through the house trying to clear intruders which is crazy simple plan is if your family's all upstairs you all get in a room and you guard that door one guy comes to the door he gets shot you could hold off five men doing that but if you haven't developed that plan in advance when the time comes you're either not going to come up with any plan or you're going to come up with some really bad ideas so plan ahead and think ahead of course I just gave you a cursory overview there's a lot of details that are left out the idea being if you have an interest in these topics you can do more of your own research if you go down to the links section I do have some articles linked that would give you a good start if you have some comments on this if perhaps you've had experience in life or death situations or you're a combat veteran if you'd like to share what your thoughts are I would love to hear them and if you enjoyed this content please take a second and hit the like button it really makes a huge difference to me and it really encourages me to do more videos and I appreciate it when you do that thank you so much and stay safe